Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. This is a recap episode 560. So that means the, I'm going to go from episode 539 to 558. This is your opportunity in case you missed some to hear a little tidbit, maybe an update of how I felt about those episodes last four weeks. So there's a number of episodes. I'll go through them quickly and I hope you enjoy. Thank you, sponsors. Many of the sponsors had dedicated shows, as happens each of these segments rotated around. But thank you, sponsors Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, ComC.com, Beckett Media. Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, Heritage Auctions, Hugs and Scott Auctions, and Panini, Upper Deck, and Tops. We started out with episode 539, The Mortality. I don't think I'm fixated on this, and I don't think bad Brad Askew is either, but I don't think I've resolved it. And now, just even in these last four weeks, two other uh, friends of mine in the hobby have passed away. One uh, a little bit younger than me, Rich Altman. I'll get to that in a minute. And then uh, Ben Eklar, who's quite a bit younger than me, used to work for me. Great guy. Both those guys, great guys. Very involved in the hobby, exemplary. So if you ask me why I'm doing mortality, I'm older than those guys. And I still have not resolved it. I'm a little bit of a think out loud guy. Hence the 539A episode, which was just my reflections after talking to Brad and talking to others. I actually wound up giving a speech to a group of CEOs who were thinking about mortality and estate planning and, and a bunch of things like that. The guys that were presidents and CEOs of companies. I made a few remarks and answered a bunch of questions. So I'm thinking about this and there are other people who are thinking about it too. 539B was the tribute to Rich Altman. Again, worthy guy. Just done so many things in the in the industry for a long time. Very shocking to see him at the National and uh, a week later he's gone, but uh, not forgotten. And I hope that his uh, memory and legacy li- lives on. 540 was the other recap. Don't do that. 541, the outtakes from For the Hobby, Jordan Hagedorn's podcast. And Jordan gets something out of me that other people don't, I think. He's younger. He's enthusiastic. This was uh, his show. And so he gets to ask all the questions. And he just comes at it from his enthusiastic perspective. And I do my best to answer his questions. But we both love the hobby and we're both for the hobby. So thank you, Jordan, for your contribution. 542, outtakes from Jeremy Lee's Sports Card Live. That was the week before the National. And Jeremy asked me about that. I was happy to do that. The National now seems like a long time ago, but it was the week before when we recorded that. And Jeremy does a great job of weaving in the questions and comments and chat from the viewers. It's a live show on Saturday evenings. Highly recommend it. Sports Cards Live. 543 was the then and now Rich Klein. And I realized, in case you have some confusion, most people like the episodes with Rich and uh, me because we lived it. We're not exactly contemporaries, but we've tracked with each other for quite a while. And it was delightful to see Excel at some of those uh, PR things. I do not regard this podcast as PR or, or fluff or anything that's a uh, canned kind of thing. I think it's very spontaneous. It's not the kind of questions that I hated that I got from national media when I was on TV and radio uh, a long time ago when it'd be very superficial. So I, I'm enjoying the podcast. I'm kind of my own producer, I guess. Uh, 544 was the shocking uh, big blockbuster news of tops being out supplanted by fanatics and that really has has upset a lot of people including the people at tops i'm sure but uh, life will go on and i think tops has some really sharp people so does panini and upper deck and leaf and the, the industry will adjust the key players will adjust and i'm pulling for them I, I think we've got a great hobby and i don't want anybody to mess it up but there will be changes 544a was the outtakes with adam gray truly the basketball card fanatic some of these outtakes are when i was being interviewed by the person but this wasn't off the record but it was just some additional conversation that adam and i had i, I didn't put anything in in there that would betray confidences, but we, we had some further discussions that were beyond what we did in our original episode, and I thought it'd be worth uh, sharing with everybody. 544B was the five listener questions. I've done six listener questions. When I do five, that means I could take a little bit more. If you've got questions, you send them in. I, I really can't do it. I'm starting to get more questions than I can answer, but sometimes I can group them together, or I can put two together, or just defer something, or make it something I'll do eventually, but uh, I can't just send me your question, and then I promise to do it the next day. It, it doesn't work like that. But I do appreciate your questions. 544C was a last minute. I throw it in there because that, that same day was the Hobby Hotline, which was huge. The, the Fanatics news was all about that. And so that was very fresh. And so I'm mainly capturing my comments out of that. But another a sharp group of co-hosts, panelists, we have a good time. Again, highly recommend Hobby Hotline on Saturday morning's live show. 545 was the dueling questions with Nat Turner. I had teased that a, a day before, I think. Unfortunately, I'd already done it 
before the Fanatics news broke. So one of the questions that I had for Nat, or that he had for me, I think, was about the, the single licensees and just the way that was going. And uh, maybe 12 hours later, it was, I think it was the same day. But again, very sharp guy. Enjoyed the interaction with him, and I wish him well with the, all he's doing at Collector's Universe and PSA. 546 was Dan Ertle, recommended by Jeremy Murray. He said, we're doing this uh, CBCS. We've been doing it for a number of years. There's some similarities to uh, the card grading and the authentication. And I thought, and he said, Dan would be a good guy. And so I enjoyed getting to know Dan and hearing uh, his journey, as well as uh, just comparing notes on comics versus cards, which is a decision I had in the sixth grade. And I turned to the right. <laughs> I went toward cards. And my buddy Harlan turned to the left, and he went with comics. And he had all these Superman comics from his older brother. So I still made the right choice. 547, the interview with Bob Brill that I did with Rich Klein. Rich, I've known uh, Bob a long time too. So I've known Rich for a long time. I've known Bob for a long time. So we just had a three-way conversation. Bob is a longtime radio veteran. He's done everything. So Rich enjoys interacting with him. So do I. And, and that was great. So 548, the basketball dueling questions. I'm starting to do more topical dueling questions. So that if you're really interested in basketball, there's Adam Gray and there's Kyle from Wax Museum. They're, they're prolific podcasters and content uh, uh, creators and uh, really enjoyed. I had uh, bumped into Kyle at the National and then we wanted to schedule something um, no, it was it was great. Again, he, we had some good questions. I love his passion, and he's always trying to be helpful. He's basically a teacher, and he, he can recognize that I'm basically a teacher, maybe a professor. I don't know. So, five forty nine was the outtakes from Breaking Cardboard, and five forty nine A, same thing. I had that from John Newman asking me to to participate in his first episode of his new podcast. He's again quite the prolific podcaster, but he brought on Corey from Yamwax, and they. And then he grilled me. We just had a conversation and, and it was great. They're both really sharp. Corey has uh, eclectic interests. It brought up some non-sport things, which caused me to think about my position on that. And again, you just have to, you should listen to the whole episode of Breaking Cardboard and it's out there. It's going to be a monthly show. And again, highly recommend it. 549B, the six listener questions, 7.0. Again, just six more questions that I'm gathering. I don't want to be discouraging, but I'm, I'm getting more questions now. That's a good thing. So send them on and I'll get to them and uh, deal with them. 550 was the dueling questions. The second part with Matt Turner. Again, just I'm really happy that a passionate collector is involved with PSA. And one of the things you'll notice from this dueling question is I pressed him a little bit on the future. If you're a public company, you've got to be guarded. But if you're a private company, you can say what you want. And he's the managing partner. So nice to know that he thinks ahead, thinks long term. That was a great takeaway for me and hopefully for you too. 551 was the basketball dueling questions with Adam Gray. I should have dueled Kyle from Wax Museum and Adam Gray from Basketball Card Fanatic. But again, I, I love basketball. Basketball is the main sporting events that I go to in person now with the Maverick season tickets that I've had for 32 years now, I think. So Adam was fun dealing with Adam. 552 was the content conversation from the dinner at the Waters Creek show in August. And the 552 was the intros. And we talked about stickiness. And uh, that was the icebreaker question that stickiness is just not people listening to or viewing your whole episode. It's uh, subscribing and uh, and teeing up the next one and then uh, telling your friends. So we, we all want that. If you like this episode or you like this podcast or like the other ones I've recommended, you would tell your friends and... Uh, and, and make it a regular habit. 553 was the, the second segment of that. The participants sent in questions ahead and we voted when we got there. What do we want to talk about? What questions do we want to deal with? And this was the number one question, the future of the manufacturers, how they would be impacted. Terrific to have Brian Gray there, who's also a co-host of Hobby Hotline. So he's legit, but he wears a lot of hats. But getting the perspective of a manufacturer was wonderful. And I really appreciate Brian being there. And you don't have to ask Brian twice to share his opinion. He's opinionated, but it's grounded in, in being in the hobby Pretty much his whole life. 554 was my interview, and 554A was the carryover of my interview of Andy Friedman. Very interesting guy, uh, writer, musician, artist, real renaissance man, and I really enjoyed the interaction there. And he loves baseball cards, and he loves drawing baseball cards, or I don't know, it's fine art, I think. So, and I'm all about that too. 554B, another listener questions. Again, I've gotten behind on those, so uh, I'm not going to do that every weekend, but I, there are going to be some questions that come in that are worth dealing with. 555 was the content uh, creator conversation. Future of marketplaces. That was the second question. They got the second most votes. And that was the impact on uh, the secondary market. The hint that fanatics and, and the PA and the leagues are interested in particip participating in the secondary market sales. To do that, we talked about what that might imply for fanatics, uh, potential further acquisitions, as well as uh, current players and marketplaces out there right now. 556 was 
The next question, which was posed by Victor, that got the third most votes about parallel rookie cards. And Victor just feels like parallel should not be rookie cards. Should is the operative word. Uh, I, I may even agree with him, but it, it, it doesn't matter what individuals think. I'm, I'm retired. I have personal opinions, but uh, those decisions, the ship has sailed by the fact that the licensees, the leagues and players have deemed that if there's an RC logo on the card, it's a rookie card. I'm sympathetic to Victor, but I think the ship has sailed. 557 was the, the last one, which was James Perez, Elite Hunters, talking about how he, he felt there was some disrespect, or at least not full respect, for the fact that uh, cards are a legitimate investment. We talked about the, the naysayers, the people that think it's not an investment, even though a lot of people have made a lot of money, but I think it, it may be somewhat semantics that, of definitions in that, you know, that it's not investment, it's arbitrage or it's trading or it's speculation. Regardless, people are making a lot of money. They're buying things and they're selling it later, sometimes a little bit later, sometimes a long time later, and making some pretty big bucks in some cases. And then lastly, 558, which was a suggestion uh, that we got and, and Rich adjusted a little bit. It was uh, about the non-rookie cards, interesting cards, and it was about the decades. And I thought, why don't we just start with 52 and Rich and I can just work our way up. We'll see how far we get in 15 minutes and then uh, we can keep going. Again, this is one, if you want us to keep going and to pick up with 58 or 59 where we were and work our way up to the present, or at least to the, in the meaningful sets where that matters of non-rookie cards that are noteworthy. Happy to do that, but if nobody says anything, we'll put it on the back burner. If a bunch of people say, hey, that was great, I can't wait till you get to 1963, then fine, but we'll accelerate it. So that was it for my last four weeks of episodes. Two tributes in there, or they aren't in there actually, the Ben Eklar tribute was this past weekend, so it's not included by technicality, but very melancholy. And uh, so take care of yourself. If you're in the hobby, it's a great hobby and it ought to be a great time. It ought to be therapeutic. It shouldn't be stressful. So hopefully you're, uh, you're de-stressing with the hobby instead of adding stress with the hobby. Best to everybody. I'll be back again tomorrow with another interesting episode.